Today, I'm going to be breaking down my new album, Laurel Hell, song by song. Three words I would use to describe Valentine, Texas. Dust devils, clouds, desert motel. It starts very minimal, and then at a certain point, it goes bang. I think it's good to start with a, a bang. A long time ago, somewhere in, in a vast expanse of America. And I was in a motel room. I had like closed up the curtains, made a really dark mood for myself and just wrote the first verse. And then the second verse I wrote, basically in the car ride over to a show in Marfa, Texas, because on the way to Marfa, there's a, a town called Valentine and it's just desert. It's just like the most deserted desert you've ever seen. and. I saw my first dust devils and the clouds and everything was just so beautiful. That's where the, the second verse comes from. Three words to describe working for the knife would be late capitalist, blade runner, resignation. I don't think I ever write autobiographically in, in like the confessional sense. I think what I do is I feel a feeling and then what I want to express is that feeling. So the lines are, I always thought the choice was mine and I was right, but I just chose wrong. It means a lot of things to me, but to say it simply, it's that you've grown up, you've lived your life or you've lived your childhood, it's over. Time has passed and you can't take back the choices you made and now you have to live with them. I also think when you're younger, you make all these choices that you don't even realize shape the rest of your life forever and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> soft, so the three words that describe the song Stay Soft are sex, trauma, disco. Frankly, this song is about people who are hurt finding other people who are hurt and using each other to make sense of their pain. During the pandemic, I realized I really need to dance. I really need something to make me move and feel good. Even though the lyrical content is sad or resigned or whatever, I couldn't handle also producing music that was like dreary and you know, I just needed something to pick me up and get me out of the funk. I find that when a song's lyrics are very, very sad or just about something very dark, it's really hard to bring a person in and have them relate to it when the music is also just heavy handed. My arms Three words to describe everyone are Minimal, solitary, Beak. Beak is actually an electronic group from the UK and they were a big reference for this song. And I drew inspiration from how a lot of their production is very minimal, but it still feels significant and emotional and it, you know, it works. I wrote this song when I didn't have an instrument around, so it was just me singing to myself. And so I wrote the, um, the words in the vocal melody. I think I got too used to not having any accompaniment because when I tried to add chords to it or I tried to add accompaniment to it, nothing was satisfying. And so I just finally decided I should allow it to be this minimal thing with just a, a, a simple beat and a few notes on a synthesizer and call it a day. It's basically my one shot at truly connecting with the listener and expressing myself to this person who hopefully will connect. And I'm trying to give everything I have 
so that I can get my feeling to that person. Three words to describe the song Heat Lightning are heat lightning, insomnia, giving up but in a good way. Initially, heat lightning, the whole song basically sounded like the first half of it, but something didn't feel right. It just felt a bit boring. And then Patrick came up with the idea of like having it depart into this whole new sound. We um, drew inspiration from Prince and just sort of that kind of a little bit more of an R&B feel to it. Watch it from so Patrick Highland is um, my very longtime producer. We met in college and we met because I needed a production student for some for a, a project and I needed it fast. I didn't really know him, but I was like, you, come with me. We just work well together and I think I keep going back to working with him because now there's a trust. Most of the time, you know, we don't even have to talk, we just understand. When you're making an album, you just have to allow yourself to be so vulnerable and ugly. And I have a hard time being that in front of people I don't know very well. Three words that pop into mind when I think about The Only Heartbreaker are the bad guy, relationships, <laughs> dance beat. I was just puzzling over this song and I just couldn't figure it out. I have I don't know, 20 different versions of it. None of it was satisfying, none of it felt good. The first layer I wanted to express in the dynamic of this relationship that's being sung about is that you, or the protagonist, always ends up making mistakes in the relationship. Somehow you're just always the bad guy, always the one hurting the other person, and the other person is always forgiving you and you just feel ashamed and bad about yourself. But also I wanted to express another layer where you know, you stop and think about how maybe you're the only one continuing to mess up because you're the only one trying and you're the only one revealing yourself to the other person. And when you reveal yourself, you always reveal yourself to be ugly. So I wanted to get closer to expressing the fact that people are usually never good or bad, you know, we're oh, you're usually in between. For my own sake, I wanted to express that I am not a dichotomy, I am complex, I am bad and good and neither. And I just needed that for myself and so I wrote what I needed. Three words that I think describe love me more are the exorcist, urgency, running. There's a synth line on the top that's like da 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 unless they're geniuses, we tend to kind of go back to the same three to five themes throughout our life. So for Love Me More, I guess it's a repetition of that same theme where I'm just, it's almost like somebody else loving you really hard is a really convenient distraction from yourself. And maybe that's one of my themes where I, tr I am always trying to find fulfillment via other people's love. Can't be healthy, but it is what it is. The three words I would use to describe the song, There's Nothing Left For You, are big waves crashing. So I just used the narrative of somebody who had spent most of their life pursuing one singular goal and I envisioned a person who could no longer pursue this one thing that they had spent their entire life pursuing and realized they have nothing else. I wrote this song basically as I finished my last show. So that was, I guess, 
the end of something that I had been working towards feverishly, and I guess I was reflecting on that. Three words to describe the song Should Have Been Me are 80s, compassion, nuance. So this song is roughly about being cheated on, but also understanding why. I wanted to write a song about cheating that came from understanding and compassion and empathy. And the thing is when you're in a relationship, you get to know a person and you love a person fully for who they are. And, and you understand all of their flaws and their good side and their bad side. I think in a real relationship, a person doesn't just become a villain because they did something wrong. The more I need forgiveness, the more open I become to forgiving. And I think I just needed a lot of forgiveness and acceptance of myself. And that made me open to writing about forgiving other people. I just needed to lighten the load and not have so much anger and shame and sadness. And I think forgiveness is the way to go for that. I guess, I guess. Three words that describe the song, I guess, quiet, still, piano. So this song is the oldest song on the album. I don't even remember when I wrote, I guess, that's how old it was. It just sit, sat in my notebook for a really long time. I wrote that just that part alone, randomly on the keyboard. I heard that melody and I quickly recorded it and then went about my day and that was years ago. But I found that that melody kept coming back to me and I realized I should give that melody a home somewhere. The lines go, it's been you and me since before I was me. Without you, I don't yet know quite how to live. Sometimes you've been with an idea or a goal or a person so long that it's a deep part of you. And without them, it's like you have to figure out a whole new person to be. When someone or something has made you who you are, even if it's the end, there's a gratefulness for how you came at where you are together. You wouldn't be who you are without them. There's a real beauty and peace to that, I think. That's our land. It shines like a big moon. Three words that describe the song, that's our lamp. Carnival, happy, goodbye. So what I wanted to express was like walking down the street with something ending inside of you and in, in your life, but no one around knows and life is going on as it, as it always had around you. I wanted this feeling of liveliness and a lot of people being around. And at first we tried to just make the sounds louder. It, nothing felt right. And then I realized, oh, I, if, I want, if I want to feel like people are all around me, I should just put crowd sounds in. We also mixed in our own room sounds and talking sounds. And we also sang, you know, parts over and over together so it sounded like a chorus and that really did the trick. I've tended to end my albums on a quiet note. With everything that's going on and with the tone of the album I just I think Patrick and I both felt it best if we ended with a carnival and a party. Well that's it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me talk. I hope you listen to my album, Laurel Hell. <laughs>